that I did last class period. Except now, not only do I have a fraction in the numerator and the denominator, but now I have them separated by addition and subtraction in the numerator and denominator. However, so whenever you guys are adding and subtracting, or especially when you guys have complex fractions, the best thing I want you guys to do is, one, identify the LCM. And let's get rid of this crazy stuff that we have going on in the numerator and denominator. So to get rid of these, all I simply need to do is multiply every single term by my LCM. So let's figure out what the LCM is. Well, here I can factor this. Difference of two squares tells me this is a factored form of x minus 3, x plus 3. So if you guys look at this, the common factor or the common multiple for all of these has to contain at least an x minus 3 and an x plus 3. Does everybody agree with me? So my common multiple is x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now all I'm simply going to do is basically you're multiplying your LCM and your numerator and your denominator. But when you do that, since they're separated by addition or subtraction, you have to apply distributive property, correct? So in reality, you guys are going to multiply everything by your LCM. And since you're multiplying, that means since you're multiplying, that means everything is separated by multiplication. So since they're separated by multiplication, you can apply the division property. OK? So now we just had the war of division property. Let's clean up and see what we have left over. I have 2 times x plus 3 plus 3x. That's left in the numerator, right? Because those I factored those out. Right? That's all I got left. Denominator, I have 3 times x minus 3 minus 4x. So we don't need to be lazy. We can do this. 2x plus 6 plus 3x. 3x minus 9 minus 4x equals. 5x plus 6 over negative x minus 9. And there you go. So when you have complex fractions, there's actually 